Spain, and uh, I'm also Syrian, so uh, I have like this uh, background of uh, two very intense uh, movements over the course of one year and a half. It's been very intense, and um, I'd like you, I'd like you to introduce yourself before we start as well. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Robert Valencia. I am the contributing writer for Global Voices uh, in uh, US Hispanic, you can say US Hispanic, sometimes I do um, contributions for uh, Global Voices Latin America. Uh, I'm originally from Bogota, Colombia, but I was um, living in the States for practically half of my life and now I'm um, based in New York. Thanks, Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm Watchford Bonite. I'm Watchford Bonite. I write for Global Voices. I'm from Nigeria. I live in Nigeria. I'm Alexis Renko. I used to write uh, and edit for Global Voices until February, until I moved to Moscow. Right now I'm uh, head of uh, Deep Needs of Social Technology. Yeah. So we have here. Um, we're four, four people, and I'm sure many of you could be here with us. And uh, we're going to try to have this uh, as an open session on uh, the different movements that we have been experiencing and how mobilizations that started in, in Tunisia, in the north of Africa, have evolved and transformed and in different ways have spread to the rest of the world with different connotations. So how many of you have uh, experienced the social movements, mobilizations, uprisings in your countries? Okay. So for me, and this is very personal, I wanted to, uh, to share, I wanted each of us to share a picture of uh, something that for us represents the movement, something that for us is symbolic of the movement. These movements are different, they have different scenarios, different implications, different contexts, and different repercussions of going and taking to the streets. But I think what they have in common, we can all agree, is some kind of lack of representation and, and lack of trust uh, in, uh, from citizens in traditional uh, structures, traditional institutions, both political and also media-wise, and the emergence of new forms of citizen organizing, citizen uh, voices, citizens using their own uh, resources, their own media, their own tools, their own creativity, because they do not rely on others to do it so much anymore. So this is, I guess, the common framework, the common background. And this is my picture that I chose. Like I said, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Mediterranean, I'm, I'm a Spaniard, I'm Spanish, and I'm also Middle Eastern. So uh, you cannot imagine what it meant for me to be experiencing uprisings at the same time in Syria and in Spain. So when, uh, when the revolution started in Syria in March 2011, I started hearing about Syria for the first time in my life. Like I started seeing uh, news opening in Syria for the first time in my life. Nobody had ever talked about Syria. Syria was the land of no media attention. For decades, nothing had been told about Syria. And all of a sudden, this wall of, uh, of fear, of silence broke. And, uh, and uh, it was hard for me to believe that Syrians could actually uh, threaten or question this government. And now we realize why this was so dangerous, because there is probably no government comparable to the amount of cruelty the Syrian government is displaying against the Syrian people. And, um, and like I said, I was experiencing, are we all here together, guys? Everyone needs a minute? Are we all good? OK. So, and like I said, I saw how mobilizations that started in the Middle East and North Africa had their own eco, their own event in Spain. So, for, for, uh, we had this huge demonstration, and then 40 people decided to stay and camp out at Puerta del Sol, Madrid. And the next day was hundreds, the next day was thousands. So look at this picture. This is on the top is Tahrir Square. And that is Puerta del Sol, Madrid. It's hard to differentiate them. So for me, this is a very symbolic picture which goes hand in hand with this other picture. This is Egyptians demonstrating in Egypt and saying, from Tahrir to Puerta del Sol, democracy for all. 
So this is my, uh, my, my picture that I chose as a, as a symbol of uh, what we've been going through. And I would like, uh, I would like um, Robert to, to talk about, to present his picture now. Thank you, Leila. Um, this is a picture that, um, <laughs> and that's, can you go back to the, to the other picture that you showed? Is no, that, that one. That that one oh, that's, that's, okay. So, um, again, um, uh, Janisa, no, I don't think Janisa is here, but um, I did most of the coverage for, from at the very uh, epicenter of Occupy Wall Street for Global Voices. Uh, this is an interesting picture uh, because Americans love self-deprecation. And in a way, given the fact that this is such a serious situation, there's also always a use of sense of humor. And how many of you are familiar with Taco Bell? You know that the mascot of Taco Bell was the Chihuahua that says Pioquero Taco Bell. Well, the guy was laid, the, the, the dog was laid off. So here the dog is um, protesting and says, Viva la ocupación. And one thing that, that also for me this is symbolic is because it, it was not just a mainstream protest. It's just not a bunch of wide middle, middle class people protesting in Tsukari Park. This also became an all-American uh, concern, including Hispanics, African-Americans, Asian-Americans, all communities of color and ethnicities clustering around uh, Tsukari Park in uh, the vicinity of uh, Wall Street. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a backdrop, um, the Occupy movement was also inspired by what was going on in uh, Tahir Square, Puerta del Sol, and uh, it arrived to American shores. And the movement really started sparking on, uh, I think, in early September. No one really knew what was going on. But the, but the movement started booming. And then they had this massive, you can recall, the October 15th um, uh, manifestations across the world. Um, and I have another image that I, I forgot to share with Lila, that's okay. Um, so you had this horde moving to Times Square in New York, and many people were holding signs that, that read, uh, Times Square is our Tahir Square. So you can see this uh, interconnection between uh, different Occupy Wall Street movements um, in the United States. Uh, and one thing that I, 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 I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but the, I don't know if we should, we should talk about the backdrop of what really moved people to start uh, protesting in. Uh, maybe you can throw a couple sentences on that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think uh, in essence, <coughs> uh, every every Occupy movement uh, had the same root. But in the case of the United States, uh, what really fueled the, mo the movement is the political deadlock in Washington, D.C. You have the Democrats, you have the Republicans, or the party of no. That's how they call it. The Republicans are called the party of no. You know, healthcare reform, no. Uh, student debt uh, loan reduction, no. They say no to everything.